Hello everyone. Well, today we have a very interesting topic. I think most of you are going to be very interested in how to get glowing skin naturally. That's the topic today. And we are in discussion with Dr. Rose. Dr. Rose is a leading naturopathic doctor joining me live from Canada. Welcome, Dr. Rose. Thanks for having me, Amida. Thank you. Yes. Hi, everybody. <laughs> my, my, my pleasure. So let's just, you know, women, obviously, we are obsessed with getting this glowing skin. What is the magic here? You know, um, the, you know, our, our face is the first thing people see. I mean, it's been covered for a while, half of the face anyway with masks, but I know we're all looking forward to showing our faces and getting our best, putting our best face forward, um, especially because you've been wearing this, these masks during this world pandemic. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, issues happening underneath the mask as well with our skin. Um, mm -hmm. So that people, now that we are slowly opening up, we, we really want to make sure that our skin is healthy and glowing and, and happy underneath and that we're putting our best face forward. Sure. So let's just talk about uh, the, the secret to getting a glowing skin without the mask. Internal. Uh, it, let's just talk on the internal point of view since you're a naturopathic doctor. Yes, for sure. So um, basically, it starts from the inside and you work your way outside. A few things that I, whenever someone comes in and they're talking about having acne, having breakouts, having aging skin, psoriasis, eczema, we have to look at the inside. The first thing I want to rule out is that there are no food intolerances or sensitivities. Some of the key ones that show up in, in my practice, whether we do an elimination diet or we do a food intolerance test to determine um, mm -hmm. what the problems are, usually the problem foods are dairy, mm -hmm. uh, soy, especially in premenopausal uh, women, mm -hmm. um, red meats, Mm -hmm. um, fried and greasy foods as well. Those can be an issue. Um, mm -hmm. Foods that are heavy and laden in trans fat. So you want to start there. Um, mm -hmm. You also want to make sure that if you are constipated, that you um, try to work through that and mm -hmm. improve your bowel function. Because the more constipated you are, the more you have toxins that are going to be recirculating in the system, hormones that are going to be recirculating in the system. And can, they can become repeat offenders and it cr create more inflammation in the skin. And then it comes out on the face? Or... Ex exactly, yes. And particularly for dairy, dairy is a huge culprit uh, mm -hmm. for worsening skin issues. So if you know that you are sensitive to dairy, um, mm -hmm. having a little bit here or there um, mm -hmm. when you're having severe acne is, and you know that you have a dairy issue, it's mm -hmm. probably not a good idea. But the great thing is that there are lots of dairy alternatives that you can look into from different plant-based sources like oats, like cashew nut, you know, so it's not like 20 years ago when it was just soy and soy is also can also be an issue for people as well, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so yes, it comes out on the skin, it leads to con more congestion, more inflammation, redness, flare-ups in whatever skin condition that you have. Wow. All right. So it, you said you talk about gluten and soy, but any other herbs that you think women should take to just make sure that we are internally kind of cleansing our system? Yes. Some of my favorite herbs for supporting uh, healthy skin and for supporting healthy digestion. Um, mm -hmm. I love uh, milk thistle to help support the liver. Um, mm -hmm. Nettles, because it's so high in so many nutrients and vitamins. Mm -hmm. um, ginger is a fantastic natural anti-inflammatory, and you can easily add ginger to any food that you make, stir fries, stews, have the ginger in like a tea form as well. Mm -hmm. um, burdock roots, another one that's really, goes really deep and helps support um, mm -hmm. digestion. Uh, bitter herbs in general, I love as well, because they help start, help the digestion from starting at the mouth, right? And even when I recommend for my patients to incorporate more fruits and vegetables in their diet, mm -hmm. um, one of those types, specific types of vegetables that I, I recommend are the bitter vegetables, um, including you know bitter melon, rapini, kale, chard, because when you taste that bitter principle, it starts to stimulate that, that digestive process right from the mouth. It signals down into the intestines to get things churning and get things moving. And the more your digestive system is enhanced, the better you're going to have elimination and the better your skin is going to, to be and the better it's going to glow. Wow, beautiful. 
Um, so, but, you know, it's hard to eat bitter gourd and some of those vegetables that you're talking about. Uh, you know, I can understand the science behind it, but it's difficult to, even you put it in a smoothie, it's got that really bitter taste. You know? I know, I know. So what I, how I have people uh, incorporate them and how I do it as well, like watercress, for example, my husband makes a wonderful watercress soup, but he pairs it with either pumpkin or sweet potato. So it doesn't have to be all bitter. You just have to taste that bitter principle. So, you know, there's two ways you can do it. If you're having, if you're incorporating it in your foods, you can just, you know, try to match it with something that's a bit sweeter to the palate so that your palate's not in shock, but you're still getting a bit of that flavor to get that stimulation going. Or if you're using another quick and easy way to do it is if you're using an herbal tincture where you just basically take a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon of that bitter herb right? Mm -hmm. uh, Canadian bitters is one um, uh, wonderful uh, tincture I love. And you just kind of put it on your tongue and you just take it, wash it down with some water and you're good to go. You got things moving. Sure, sure. Do you recommend uh, like bitter supplements? Uh, you know, if, if we have a problem with the food, bitter food, do you think so? Well, that's what I was saying. That's that tincture. So a, a bitter oh, tincture it. herbs. Yeah. So you can use it as a tincture and do it quickly like that, or you can incorporate it into your food. Yeah. Oh, got it, got it. All right, so let's just talk about the topical part, right? All of us spend thousands of dollars, at least the women, on our makeups and skin creams and you name it. What yes. are your thoughts on that? <laughs> yes, um, you know what? It, what you put on your skin is as important as what you are eating for your skin. So you want to look for ingredients that are clean, that don't, that, sorry, you want to look for ingredients that are good, but you want to look at skincare products that are clean and that don't contain ingredients that are going to um, create more sensitivities. So parabens, you want to avoid um, formaldehyde, you want to avoid fragranced products as much as possible, mm -hmm. particularly if you already have sensitive skin, because mm -hmm. these fragrances are actually, can actually be hormone disruptors as well. So mimic mm -hmm. estrogen in the body and also, you know, sensitize your skin topically when you apply it. So you want to do that. But what you want to look for are ingredients like vitamin C, like hyaluronic acid, um, mm -hmm. skin care. So tremelo mushroom is a big one right now. And I have it in some of uh, my skincare products mm -hmm. where it's a natural kind of hyaluronic acid uh, alternative. So that helps to maintain that moisture into the skin because we lose moisture from the mm -hmm. environment. And then as you get older, collagen mm -hmm. taken internally and used topically can help protect your skin from the signs of early aging. Um, I mentioned vitamin C. I like mm -hmm. using herbs. I like using um, organic uh, skincare whenever I can or wild crafted skincare because you're avoiding pesticides and pesticides are another irritant that you want to avoid in your skincare. And, and what are your thoughts on facial oils? It seems to be a rage of using facial oils nowadays. Facial oils, yes. You know, um, we shouldn't be afraid of using oils. Um, it's just to make sure that you're not using oils that are going to clog your pores, like mineral oil, for example. But there are fantastic oils out there that can help balance the skin's tone, balance how much um, sebum and, and how, how much uh, oil the skin is producing. A big problem is overwashing. We tend to overwash, over cleanse, over sanitize everything. And when we do that to the skin, it can lead to uh, increasing the appearance of fine lines, um, you know, creating dryness and dullness in the skin. So the use of facial oils as a facial, like to cleanse the skin, um, mm -hmm. you know, and also uh, within skincare products, we should try not to, to, to be afraid of that because it can be very nourishing and very protective for our skin's barrier. Sure. We have a question. Someone is asking about bone broth. Bone broth. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So is it good for the skin? Yes, if you can have bone broth, it's it's wonderful. It's high in gelatin. Gelatin breaks down to collagen, and collagen is great for your skin. Collagen peptides um, help to keep your skin's glow, help to boost and plump your skin, um, and help to reduce uh, fine lines and dark circles and such. So, if you um, are able to have bone broth, or even use using bone of um, you know either whether it's cow or fish bones or chicken bones to make your broth to then make your soups, that's a wonderful thing you can do because it can really help nourish your, not just your skin, but it's great for your joints um, and you know, and all over and great for just maintaining moisture all over your body, which is great. And what about uh, people who are vegetarians? What should they do? Is there an alternative to a bone broth? Um, 
not necessarily to a bone broth. Vegetarians who don't have any meat at all, um, mm -hmm. and no, and if you don't have fish bones either, mm -hmm. then you're you don't you, you're not going to really get the same. It's not the same. Um, however, you can. Um, there are definitely there's herbs. There are vegetables that are also high in other ingredients that are great for the skin. It's not just about the collagen and the gelatin. There are other mm -hmm. things you can do in order to preserve and maintain the the collagen that you have naturally. You want to make sure you have enough vitamin C, for example. So I encourage vegetarians vegetarians and everyone to make sure you're getting enough vitamin C from your fresh produce, fruits and vegetables, because without enough vitamin C, you're not going to maintain or manufacture enough collagen for your skin. Wow, beautiful. Uh, so what else do you think we should do to make sure um, skin is beautiful and glowing? Like does yoga, mm -hmm. breathlessness and laughter, does that help with this? Yes, <laughs> all of that happiness. Um, but one thing I do want to mention is sleep. So, you know, sleep is the, the probably the most important pillar of health where you, 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 you take yourself down for eight to nine hours, hopefully um, it's deep. Uh, you're, you're going through all the phases of sleep. Um, it's restorative, it balances your immune system. Um, it helps you to feel happier the next day, be more uh, present and your brain's working and you know, you're know you reducing your risk for cognitive decline later on. And it's great for the skin, right? So your body goes through a natural detoxification process when you sleep. So for me, I I highly recommend that you get you try to get enough sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, it will definitely show in your in your skin. And, and yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree uh, with you more because sometimes if you don't have a good sleep, you wake up and you got the puffy face, right? And you don't know what the heck happened here, right? Yes, I know. And what I say to, I get a question all the time, of, you know, from um, parents, new parents as well. And I've, I was there before too. And I felt that, you know, my skin looked like the worst it could have ever looked, you know, at that time. But the skin can bounce back you can um, restore and rejuvenate your skin using natural ingredients, you know, committing to a wonderful, healthful diet. Um, these are all ways that that you can help balance your skin, even if you do go some time without getting awesome sleep, it's, it's going to be okay. But just, you know, don't beat yourself up, but just try your best to work on that. Because for your overall health and prevention of disease and other conditions, sleep is paramount. Sure. So we'll uh, wrap up this session by learning about a good skincare routine that we should follow. Yeah, well, you always want to cleanse. We're exposed to the elements. You're putting on makeup. So cleanse and double double cleanse. You mentioned oil cleansing. If that's something that interests you, you can even make your own oil, oil cleanser, but there are many on the market uh, that you can use. Um, if you have dry skin, make sure you're using something that's like a natural creamy cleanser and it's not um, stripping your skin further. Um, mm -hmm. And then you want to make sure you follow up with a really good serum. A serum is like usually either oil-based or water-based. And what's mm -hmm. great about that is that uh, after you cleanse and tone your skin with a great toner, it goes directly on the skin, no barrier, and it gets to penetrate. So your serum is your treatment. And there's vitamin C serums, hyaluronic acid-based serums, um, mm -hmm. collagen-based serums. Um, mm -hmm. You want to find a really good serum. Then you want to top that off with a really good cream or a gel. For people who have really oily skin, a, a skin a skin gel could be very soothing and balancing. Or if you really have really dry skin, go for a really good cream and make sure that you know you also wear sunscreen. Sunscreen is also very important because you want to protect your skin from the UV rays, um, which can also lead to the early signs of aging. Wow, beautiful. Okay, so the gel you talked about the same as the moisturizer. Is that what you call the gel? It just it just depends. So after you do the serum, you can choose either. Um, there are skincare products like I have a honey repair gel, for example. You could use a gel that is like a, a wonderful consistency, but it's not. Um, it's not. It's great for people who have really oily skin. They enjoy that. Or you can use a cream. If your skin's really dry, you can you can use both. You can use a gel and then you can put a cream on top of that to help seal that in. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Rose. Uh, amazing tips for all of us to start implementing like ASAP. Anything else? <laughs> Like to, Thanks for having uh, me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I just want to say this is an educational session only. She is a medical, you know, naturopathic doctor. So we are just trying to bring you every single day 10 minutes of natural, how natural therapies can help you live better. That's what we are trying to do with that. Thank you so much, Dr. Rose, for being with us. Thank you.